As Nigeria moves towards its 60 years of nationhood, the call for all-inclusiveness of youths in the scheme of things is gathering momentum. If the recent statistics is anything to go by, where the youth demography is increasing day by day, then it is high time the country got a round table to discuss the relevance of these set of people. Joining us in the studio is Gloria Chiwendu Chibuike. She is the president of Chiwendu Chibuike Foundation and Youth Counselor. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much and good morning. Good morning. Also joining us, also joining us for this conversation is Damilola Balogu, the co-founder Youth Sustainability Development Conference. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for having me. All right, we'll start with you. Um, every indication. The, uh, the youth are the future, or the youth is the future of tomorrow. Is that still relevant, or is this the future? It's here with us. Are we making good use of this demography? Um, I would say that the future is here with us. And saying that is because I've, I see a lot of progress right now with um, the youths. The demography is not really here. I would say that realistically. But um, I think we're getting there gradually because right now it's like there's so much enlight enlightenment for people. You know, the youths are beginning to know better. You know, they're beginning to become involved. And, you know, it's a good thing that we're trying so hard to participate in everything, you know, with the society that even for the people who are not able to be a part of it, we try to reach out and educate. So um, I think we're in the future because I, I think the future starts right now. All right, let's go to Damilola. A quick question for you. Uh, the United States, where you are based, and uh, all the top economies in the world, uh, the attention is now a more of knowledge-based economy, with several apps being uh, developed. Uh, it appears Nigeria is yet to think beyond oil. What is your mindset on this? Where are we? Are we mining the gold that is the youth? All right, thank you very much for this question. And I, 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 I'm glad to answer this question. It is stated that the Nigerian youth population is increasing daily. And due to this increase, this population can either make positive or negative impact. So it boils down to the policy in line to actually push for this. Honestly, Nigeria is not doing so well with respect to providing an enabling environment for youth. For example, there is lack of unemployment. The, the rate of unemployment in Nigeria is, is, is indeed really high. And I would like us to um, follow me through with these statistics as reported by the National Bureau of Statistics. It was stated that the highest unemployed in Nigerians are youths, which amount to 40.1%, falling within the age range of 15 to 24. The second highest people unemployed are within the age of 24 to 35, falling within the statistical analysis of 30.1%, which is to show that when it comes to employment, Nigerian youths are really unemployed and which still boils down to the fact that the environment is not enabling. Frank D. Roosevelt once said, we cannot always build the future for our youths, but we can always build the youth for the future. It is important that we look away from oil and then we start to invest in youth such that we, we promote innovation to come into play and so we can sell to other countries and then get wealth in, in return, which we no doubt lead to economic and social development. All right, in now. terms of poverty, allow me to give you the statistical analysis has been traced from 1985 up to this current date. When, as at 1985, Nigeria's poverty rate falls within the range of 46.3%. It's increased in 1992 to 42.7%. And in 1996, it's increased to 66.9%. 
However, towards the end of the um, 20th century, the government then in place puts in place so many poverty alleviation programs, which at the end of the day make the poverty rate fall below 12.5%. And as I currently speak to you, Nigeria's poverty rate is stacked at 40.1% as reported by the National Bureau of Statistics, specifically August 2020. Isn't that interesting that Nigeria is not still really doing so well? So in terms of poverty, unemployment, all of these things are adding up not to make the environment enabled. And, right. it, it, and it is also important that we look beyond oil. We invest in the youth. We create an, an environment that is enabling that, 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 is, that would um, bring about is... innovation and then also give us economic and social development. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Damilola. That's actually something everybody has been talking about. A quick correction, though. Um, it is uh, Gloria that is joining us, You're based in the U.S., and uh, uh, we have uh, Damilola with us here um, in Lagos. So on that premise, I'm going to ask you this. There's always, you see the elite society, um, aside from the, the worrying situation of you know, poor economy, unemployment, all highlighted by Dami Lola now, mm -hmm. there is this tendency to want to, the next thing any elite you see, any bright mind, is to get out of this country. And we hear a lot of the feat being accomplished abroad by young Nigerians. How can we harness that? What must the government do to even begin to get people to think Nigeria, young people, I think that um, what the government is supposed to do at this point is, because sincerely, like you said, a lot of um, young youths are trying to take their potentials out of the country. And I think it's really bad because for someone like me who I live abroad, I try as much as possible to come back home because I, you know, at some point I told myself, if I have all this knowledge, if I get all this wisdom and I'm just gonna, you know, put it in the same country that gave it to me, and, you know, it's like I need to come back home and share this wisdom and be able to impact life in my own way, you know, to people. I think the government, they can help with making things easier here by trying to, you know, they're young, talented people who, like, I see a lot of kids. Social media is the thing now. You see people who are good with um you know, sciences, being creative, and all that. And sometimes you see um, celebrities from other countries appreciating them. And then it takes them to be appreciated by someone from another country. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Then you see someone, you know, someone up there telling you, oh, we want to appreciate you now. It's like you waited for this person to be appreciated by an outsider. So the problem is if they start to appreciate what they have, start to hunt for, you know, talent, start to hunt for all this, you know, young minds who are willing, because it's hard to see someone who's willing to give in, you know, who's willing to bring out their potential. And if you see someone who's willing to bring out their potential, I think what you should do is to make them feel comfortable, make them not feel scared that in their country they're not appreciated so they feel like they want to leave. There's, there's something that, um, uh, there's a, a program, a not to a nine to five, for those that might not know, it's a program on Plus TV Africa. Um, it takes on people, entrepreneurs who, uh, you know, think outside the box, not waiting uh, for um, a job or employment from government. Uh, there's, a, there's a promo that the guy talks about uh, the fact that the environment is not conducive for young people who want to try and do something for themselves. Yes, we tell them to come home, but there doesn't seem to be incentives like, for instance, a tax relief for people that are startups that are coming up mm -hmm. and all of that. So in, in, in that aspect, how can government in sincerity begin to put moves in place to actually show that they want to appreciate these young people, want to invest in their home? I think the first step is playing by the rules. And playing by the rules, I mean, is we all would accept that in Nigeria, it's like you can get over every situation by just, oh, I know someone here, or you know what I mean? It's not a bad thing to know someone. It's not a bad thing to make your life easier by you know getting the necessary help that you need. but. It's some people do not have that access. I think everyone should be treated equally because that way people feel comfortable 
you know, to be able to say, oh, okay, I'm going to come back home. Like, I just started a business. It was, it, it was a lot of process for me. Yeah, yeah. what was the, most, what was the, uh, the toughest part for you? Um, you know, the, the toughest part for me is, I think, just registering the business alone, was, it, was, it was an issue. But this is something that is not supposed to be an issue. It took time for me to get just a registration certificate. Now I have to get, you know, other documents to back it up. And it's like, you're putting me through a whole process. It's, the but ease it, of doing business is You very know what important. I mean? And then the tax is too much. And then at the same time, it's, you're not encouraging these people. Because the truth is, a lot of young people out there have money to invest in this country. They want to come back and help. All right, let's bring in uh, Damilola again uh, to politics. Uh, the usual sing song is join politics. Now there is not too young to run law in place, signed last year by President Muhammad Buhari. Will this bridge the gap, do you think? Is it enough to motivate young people to take over power? Thank you very much for the question. And personally, for me, with this um, coming to force of the Not Too Young Bill, I would like to emphasize that it will really not still change anything as far as I am concerned. Because a lot of young persons I've spoken with recently, uh, they've always wanted to like do politics at, at a later age, which is what it is now, or they are not just interested in terms of politics because they feel out of the political affair. So I understand currently we have um, a ministry of youths and um, sports that oversees the involvement of youths in all sector. But I, personally, I would say that the, the office, I'm yet to see specifically what the office has done. So when it comes to matters of not too young to wrong build, uh, it still shows that a lot of youths are still uninterested. And then they still ask, like, maybe there should be a way that the party system would actually support youth to ensure that they actually take positions to run. It's, it is very important that youth actually take youth, youth actually take interest in matters of political affairs. But again, uh, also, Demi Lola, it, it is also a known fact that a lot of youth, either by profession, either by um, lack of um, finance, might not really be able to have access to what it takes to campaigning and then running for an office in Nigeria. So it still you know, boils down to, to the ask whole you, environment Damilola, is not if you can, if you can so hear it's me. not enough just to have the not too young, not too young bill, not too wrong to young bill, but having also the environment in that system and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to, to interject, but if you, if, you can, if, you can, if you can if you can if you can pause yes. to let me ask you this. All right. Um, you, you talked about the paucity of funds for the purchase of these forms to become part um, of uh, the uh, process. You, you know, there will always be a reason why people, young people, don't take on uh, the challenge. So my question would be, when do the youth, or when will the youth, in your thinking, begin to shift away from the excuse nature that we seem to have embraced and take on the, in spite of the challenges, find ways to become relevant. Because uh, some elders will say, power is not given to you, you take it. All right, thank you very much for this question. So, with respect to finance, like, as I stated earlier on, largely a lot of youths are unemployed. When they are not gainfully employed, they can hardly be able to gather up finance to buy a nomination form and even fund a campaign to actually bring them into office. So I, I, don't, I don't believe that they are just excuses, but I believe that it still boils down to the fact that there has to be like, the system has to be enabling such that opportunities are created, they have employment, they are able to access finance, and then they are able to like get money to buy the nomination form or maybe to maybe reduce the amount cost for the nomination form. If that is done, then I, I, I believe certainly some youth will begin to take interest. And, and personally for me, I, I would say that as youth, this is not even time to ask questions. 
This is not time to say this is what it is, this is not what it is. It is time to take action. Because as, as John Kennedy once said, he said that you shouldn't ask what your country would do for you. Rather, ask what you shall do for your country. Personally, I am a sustainable development advocate and then uh, in whatever way I am interested in this, I'm always pushing to thrive to see how that uh, to see how best that part will go. So right. in um, order to uh, like Gloria has a thought to chipping to is gotten, I think maybe um, Damilola doesn't get me uh, sometimes. Um Damilola, can you hear me please? Yes, I can hear you, Ma. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I was just trying to uh, interject um, because uh, your thought process has triggered something uh, for Gloria, who wants to uh, share a thought. Uh, please go ahead. Um, so I'm right. just trying to uh, add something to what he just said, which is this, is, this is a conversation I literally have with people almost every day. And I say that from my research, okay, I, I realized that Yes, the, the government is bad, okay? We're not going to sugarcoat it. Things are not going right in the country. We accept that. They're making things difficult, you know, for the youths. They're making it hard for you to get through even when you try. But you don't give up. And when I say you don't give up, is when it comes to politics, I don't know right now if I want to be involved in it, but I think somehow I am because, you know, I run a nonprofit, I get to do these things. But it's when it comes to politics, if you have that passion, fine. There are some people who financially they cannot get there. But those who are financially able to get there, I think the problem is most times we Nigerians, we are so we are so entitled. Like you see someone who you, you made money, yes. You start little. We don't want to start little. We don't want to learn from the roots. And that is the reason why we're always being looked down on. We don't know what it means to say, I'm trying to humble myself in order to get what I want. But we always just want to move to the top. So okay. my addition to what he's Start saying, from the roots. exactly. Don't, don't wait to get to the top before you uh, make you, the move. Exactly. So I'll come back to you for your final thoughts, uh, Damilola, on this matter. Well, we began this conversation um, about harnessing the inherent uh, strength of the youth in trying to build uh, this country. What is your um, word to the government and to young people watching the program this morning? All right, thank you very much. For the government, first of all, they should try and create an environment that is enabling. That cannot be overemphasized. It is when the environment is enabling, then things can get better. This is the, what we have when you, com when you compare Nigeria with other East Asian countries that are taking advantage of the youth population. Currently, as I speak to you, I'm certain that South Korea, according to reports, has developed its economy within the range of 25 to 40% based on youth engagement and involvement in all sector of the country. So it is important that the government creates an enabling environment in this regard. So as for youth out there, I would always, like I said earlier, it is important that you begin to take action. If it's something you want to see, if it's, if it's something you would like to see Nigeria be in, I mean, join, a, join an organization in your community or start up an organization. And in your only two way, start to make impact. This is not the time to ask questions. This is the time to take action as it is popularly stated that we're in the decade of action. Thank you very much. To sustainable development goals. So take action, and that is the only way we can be on a path to success and national development as a whole. Thank you very much. Dami Lola Balogu, thank you for your thoughts on the news. Thank you very much, Ma, for having me. All right. And to you, Gloria, thank you very much for coming to our studios on The Breakfast and our news program. Thank you. Thank you very much.